Welcome, yogis. Today's class focus is our crow pose. If you have a strap and a block available or a bolster instead of a block, please um, grab those. And if you have a strap, make your strap ready already into a loop um, so that you can um, use it later on. Today's practice, we're going to start into our standing pose at the front of the mat. And as we are standing, we're just going to have a little bit of an idea about the areas that we're working today. So for our crow pose, which is an arm balance, um, we need to have opening into the wrists. We need to have our arms at least, our hands, at least in a 90 degree angle with our forearm. So we're working on getting a little bit of opening into the wrist and strength into the wrist. We need to have a lot of stabilization into the shoulders to kind of push ourselves away from the ground. We need to have some activation in our core, which creates the lift and the lightness in this pose. And then, uh, most of all, we need to have the activation in our hip flexor, where we can really draw our knees in, so that in the end, our knees can rest onto our elbows or onto our upper arms. So those are the areas that we'll be working on today. To get started, just find a little bit of opening into the hands. So we're bringing the arms high up overhead. And then we're bringing the palms together and we're slowly pushing them all the way down as far as we can. Keep on pushing the hands into each other and then sliding your hands down, just the fingertips are touching, and then reach your hands back up. Reaching high up, I'll just be turning so that you can also see it from the front. Bring your hands down, pushing your palms together. Bring your shoulders down and your elbows down. Try to keep your palms together and then slowly allow them to separate. Pressing through the tips of the fingers. Do that one more time. Inhale, reaching it up. Palms together. Exhale, bending. Releasing your shoulders down. Releasing your elbows down. Keep on pressing through your palms. And then through the fingers. And then through the tips of the fingers. And then once your hands are down, shake them out for a moment. And you inhale, reach your arms high above your head. On the exhalation, now pushing the air down in front of you. Allowing yourself to be grounded. Now press your hands all the way back. Keep your elbows next to your shoulders or a little bit lower. Inhale, reach it back up. Finding a bit of movement in the shoulders. So exhale, release it down. Pushing your hands back and then reach it up. Bring your hands down. Pressing them back and then open it back up. Doing that two more times. Bring your hands down. Pushing them all the way back and then opening up. Movement in the shoulders, releasing it down, exhaling here. Pressing your hands back and then reaching back up. Good. Taking a deep breath in. On the exhalation, bring, coming to standing into Samastiti, bring your hands in front of your chest. Thumbs are pressing into your sternum and begin to direct your breath upwards into the direction of your thumbs. And Become a little bit aware of your breath, lengthening and deepening the breath. Finding just a little bit of warming up in our whole body. So inhale, reaching the arms high up. On the exhalation, folding forward and down. Inhale, have a halfway lift. Exhale, bring your hands down, step it back, high plank. Activating here into your core, push your weight a little bit more forward into the tips of the fingers and grab the floor with your fingertips. Make your feet nice and light by pushing more out of the shoulders. Bring your right knee to your right elbow. Step it back. Bring your left knee to your left elbow. Step it back. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, downward facing dog pose. Stretch it out, finding that opening into the shoulders. Inhaling as you reach your right leg higher behind you. Exhaling, drawing your right knee into your right elbow or upper arm. Inhale, reach it back, three-legged dog. Exhale, this time we're stepping the foot forward and through in between the hands, finding your runner's lunge. Lifting up here through the front of the body. Opening into your hips. Bringing your back knee down onto the ground. On your inhalation, reach it high up. Bring your hands behind your head. Take a deep breath in, looking up. On the exhalation, find your twist, bring your left hand down. Keep your right hand behind your head as you open up into the shoulders. Take a deep breath in. 
on the exhalation, releasing your right hand down, straightening into your right leg, into your half split pose, opening up into your hamstrings. Inhale, having a halfway lift, and bring your right hand up and release it behind your head, opening up into your twist, finding, front, finding length in the front of your body. Take a deep breath in on the exhalation, or keeping your hand behind your head, stepping it back into a supported side plank, opening up here into the right side of your body, pressing the outside edge of your foot down, release it down, high plank. Pushing your weight forward as much as you can, making your toes nice and light, but pressing the floor more away through your arms. Bring your right hand, knee to your right elbow. Inhale, step it back. Exhale, left knee, left elbow. Inhale, step it back into a three-legged dog. Reaching your left leg higher behind you. Open it up. Take a deep breath in on the exhalation. Bring your left knee to your left elbow. On your inhale, step it back. On the exhale, step your foot forward and through. Bring your foot down in between your hands and then find that length here in the front of the body. Planting your, bringing your back knee down onto the ground. Inhale, reaching your arms high up overhead. Finding that nice stretch opening into the front of your right hip. Exhale, releasing your hands behind your head. Lift your chest up a little bit more, supporting your head with your hands. Take a deep breath in. On the exhalation, releasing your right hand down and finding your twist, opening up into the chest, lifting the elbow up towards the ceiling. Take a deep breath in. On the exhalation, releasing your left hand down next to your left foot, finding your half splits. You're welcome to push through the heel or to keep your foot down onto the ground. Exhale here fully on the inhalation, halfway lift. Bring your right hand down and bring your left hand back behind your head, opening up into the chest as much as you can. Take a deep breath in. Without lowering your left hand down, stepping it back, side plank, reaching your left hand up over your head, creating all that space into the left side of the body. Take a deep breath in. On the exhalation, release your left hand down, find yourself high plank. Find that activation here into your core. Feel how you push the floor away so we're not dipping down. We're really activating into the front of the body, pushing the floor away. On your next exhalation, draw your right knee to your right elbow. On the inhale, step it back. On the exhale, left knee, left elbow. Inhale, step it back. Exhale, downward facing dog pose. Stretch it out, push your hands into the ground, gently gripping the floor with your fingertips. And then feel how you can really elevate, how you can press through the shoulders, creating space into the back of the body. Exhaling here fully. On your inhalation, step, jump, or float yourself forward into your straight forward bend. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward and down. Inhale, coming all the way up to standing, reaching your arms high up overhead. Exhale, draw your hands into your chest. Keep on pressing your hands slightly down. Pressing the shoulders down. Feeling the opening into the wrist. We're trying to have more than a 90 degree angle in the wrist. So that we get that opening that we need. Taking a deep breath in. On the exhalation, releasing your hands down. Shake them out for a moment. Allowing the wrists to become nice and warm and open. On your inhalation, reach your arms out in front. Now imagine that you really push the floor away, protracting through the shoulders, meaning that we push the, the thoracic part of the spine to so the upper back towards the wall behind us. And we press our hands towards the front of the room. Transferring your weight slowly into your left leg and then reach your right knee up in the direction of your elbow. Now, it's not likely that it's going to touch, but we're still really drawing in through the belly and I push more through the hands and reach more with the knee. You feel this into your quads and your hip flexors and then slowly release and changing sides. So, transferring the weight into your right foot 
lifting your left knee into your left elbow in that direction. That's not likely that it's going to touch, and it's not about touching. Keep on pushing away through your arms and through your shoulders. Keep on drawing in through the leg. You feel this in your quads, the front of your thigh. And then release it down. Bring your hands onto your hips and make some circles here into the hips. Releasing tension. So you should feel that quite a bit at the front of the hips. And you're welcome to use your fists just to release a little bit from the tension. Bring your feet back together. Inhale, reach your arms high up overhead. Exhalation, folding yourself forward and down. Your inhalation is a halfway lift. On the exhalation, bringing your hands down, stepping both your feet back, high plank. On the inhale, lifting your right leg up. On the exhale, right knee, right elbow. Inhale, extend it back. Lower your foot down. Inhale, left leg up. Exhale, left knee to your left elbow. Extend it back. Exhale, release it down. Exhale, draw it in. Inhale, extend it out. Exhale, release it down. Left leg, inhale, lift it up. Exhale, draw it in. Inhale, extend it out. Exhale, release it down. Stretch it back. Downward facing dog pose. So by now you should be feeling your core. You should be feeling that you have a little bit of activation, a bit of a connection into your core, into your belly area. So just feel that. Activating your core also here in your down dog as you lift up in the direction of the spine. Exhaling here fully. On your inhalation, coming back into your high plank. Pushing the floor away, gripping the floor with your fingers. Really making that work so that your fingers, your hands are active. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, draw your right knee to your right elbow. Keep it here now. Keep it here. Keep on pushing away from the floor. Keep on pressing your knee into your upper arm. If your knee is not touching, push your weight more forward into your fingers. And then step it back and changing sides. Draw your left knee in. Lift it up as much as you can, activating into your core to create that space. Push your weight forward into your fingertips. The fingers are gripping the floor. Exhale, push it back. Downward facing dog pose. If you didn't feel your core before, then hopefully you will feel it by now. Exhale here fully. On your inhalation, gazing forward, we're just going to have a couple of thunderbolt hops, finding that nice connection into the hips and into our core. So exhale here, fully bend your legs. Inhale, just kicking your legs up into your sitting bones and then lightly landing. Inhale, jump it up and land very lightly. And again. And land. And land one more time. And land. And now the same way as that, we're just going to jump it forward. Maybe it's a real jump. Maybe it's a hover. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward and down. Stepping onto your hands, releasing into the wrists. Trying to bring your toes all the way up into the creases of the wrist so that you can release here into the wrist, putting a bit of pressure, maybe lifting one foot up at a time if that feels good. Massaging here deep into the wrists. And then releasing and shaking your hands out. All of this is perfectly fine if you bend your legs. This is not about your hamstrings. It's really about your wrists and the warming up in the wrists. Bring your hands down onto the ground. Bend your legs as much as you have to until your hands can be flat down and then transfer some weight into your hands. So you want to grip the floor as much as you can, stabilizing the wrists as we do that. So we want to feel that there's some space in between the knuckle of the finger and the floor. Gripping as much as you can, transferring your weight forward. Coming onto the toes of your right foot, either staying here, still gripping the floor, or maybe you can lift your foot up and tap it onto your wrist or your forearm, and then release your leg down, coming onto the toes of your left leg. Keep on pushing the weight into your hands, and then maybe tap your wrist or your forearm with your toes, activating into the core to find that lift, 
and then releasing it back down, going back to the right leg. So onto the tippy toe, maybe staying there. Keep on pushing the weight into your hands, maybe tapping the wrist or the forearm, and then slowly releasing, and then changing sides. So maybe just onto the toes, but maybe you can tap your wrist, and then slowly release. Taking a deep breath in, halfway lift on the exhalation, coming into a toe squat. Finding a nice release here for a moment. Finding some stillness. Taking a deep breath in. Exhaling fully. And two more times. Deep breath in. Last one. Deep breath in. And then slowly releasing your knees down onto the ground, coming onto the tops of your feet, finding our lalasana lifts, activating here into the core, getting that connection into our belly area. So we want to feel how the belly button presses towards the spine, a little bit of rounding into the back. The hands go just behind the knees or in between the knees and the thighs and the thigh bone. No, sorry, your hip bone, I should say. So they go not too far forward. If you go too far forward, it gets too hard. And not too far back. If you go too far back, you don't have any lift. So somewhere in between, we're gripping the floor as much as we can. The toes stay down onto the ground. On your inhalation, lifting yourself up without you lifting your toes up. Most of the weight is in your hands. On the exhalation, releasing it back down. Now feel that that lift comes from your core. So we're pressing the belly up towards the ceiling. So exhale fully on the inhalation, lifting up. On the exhalation down, on the inhale lift it up, on the exhale down, two more times, inhale up, exhale down, last one, inhale up, exhale down, good, tucking your toes, releasing here into the soles of the feet, taking a moment here. Activating into your core and begin to lift your knees up with as much control as you can. That doesn't mean there is a lot of control. Very slowly, as slow as you can. And then see if you can come and sit down behind your knees. Bring your toes down onto the ground. Push the floor away into a seated crow pose. So the toes are together and the knees are resting just on the upper arms or maybe your elbows and feel how you push the floor away, the imaginary floor that is, and your hands rounding through the spine, pressing your belly button towards the spine. From here, bring your hands to your toes, picking up onto the big toes and beginning to straighten your legs. Then maybe you can straighten your legs all the way because you might be lucky and have long hamstrings. Maybe your hamstrings are a little bit more tight, and then you'll just have your legs bent, and that's perfectly fine. See now if you can release your left big toe without, release, without lowering your leg down. So you need to activate into the thigh, releasing your leg, keeping it as high up as you can, <laughs> trying to keep your balance at the same time, and then picking back up onto your big toe and straightening both your legs out. And then we do the same on the right side. So releasing your right leg, keeping your balance, much better on this side for me, and then picking back up onto your toes, <laughs> taking a deep breath in. On the exhalation, release your hands onto your thighs and slowly release yourself all the way down into your low boat. And from here, keep on reaching with your hands for your toes, pulling your toes back towards you. Your toes are your little audience, they're having a look at you as you're reaching. The shoulders are not going down as we bend our legs into now a reclined crow pose. So we're pointing through the toes and we're bringing our knees towards our elbows or our upper arms. We're pushing here through the hands as much as we can. Keeping your hands in this position on your exhalation coming into like a, a, a reclined high plank. On your inhale, draw it back in. Knees towards your elbows and reclined crow pose. Keep on pushing through the shoulders. The shoulders are not down onto the ground. On the exhale, extend it back out, high plank. Keep on pushing here, pressing the lower back into the ground as much as you can. 
And then draw your knees into your elbows, into your kakasana, as this pose is called, or reclined sutta kakasana. Reclined crow. So we do this one more time. Extend it out. Keep your lower back down onto the ground like a high plank and bring it back in. Draw your knees as close towards your armpits as you can, pushing up through your hands as much as you can. Keep on reaching. And then hug your knees into your chest and release your head down. And feel how good it is to let go of the tension in the back of the neck. Hugging your knees in so that there's maybe a little bit of a lift in the lower back. And from here, we're going to bring the forehead towards the knees. Maybe release the knees a little bit. Maybe rock over the spine. And we're going to see if from rocking, we can come into a squat with our feet together and our knees out to the sides. So feet together, knees out to the sides. As elegantly as you can. And again, it doesn't have to be very elegant. It's not what it is about. Then we bring our hands down onto the ground. This is our perfect position for our crow pose. So we're going to work with our first variation here. So gripping the floor with your fingers as much as you can. So we're not going to take off yet. We're going to keep one foot into the ground. So we're lifting up now, coming onto our tippy toes. We're going to see how high the knees can go in the direction of your armpits. Keep on lifting it up as much as you can. Now keep your left foot onto the ground. Keep your right knee connected to your upper arm. Bring your right toes towards your wrist. And then changing sides. So the knees are still connected. We're pushing into the upper arms or into the elbows. And we're just gently tapping one foot at a time. A little tap. And then a little tap. Activating into your core, creating that space and that lightness. And a little tap. And a little tap. Good. And then slowly release for a moment. If it's possible, staying onto your toes, maybe bringing your heels towards each other and opening up a little bit more into the hips, if that feels good. So here we're going to find our half crow, working on that for a moment. So bringing the hands down bringing the knees onto the elbows, and then lifting up through the hips. Now we're going to lean forward. So the more we lean forward, the more we have to grip the floor with our fingers so that that we're safe. Our fingers are the brakes here. Keep your left toes down onto the ground. Just reach your right toes up towards the ceiling. And then release the right leg down, and lift the left leg up. Pressing your elbow into your knee, gripping the floor with your fingers, and changing sides. Half crow here, one foot onto the ground. Now you should feel this into your core, so you should feel that you lift the belly button away from the floor as much as you can. Do that one more time on each side. Lifting up, releasing down, left side, lift it up. Feel that weight of the knees into your upper arms, and then release it down. And once you're down, bring your knees down onto the ground, tucking the toes, and just take a moment here. So now you might feel this into the back of your arms. I feel it, and after a while it will go red. That's perfectly fine, though. It's just the rubbing of your knees or your tights on your upper arm. It's just the skin that might get just a little bit irritated by doing that, but that's okay. So as we are here now, sitting onto our knees, we're going to come back to our lolasana lifts. So where before we were keeping the toes onto the ground, now we're going to see if we can lift the legs up off the ground. And for this, we're going to use our strap. So as we have the strap in a loop, we're going to bring it around our um, legs, trying to bring it as close towards the ankles as possible. And then we're going to tighten it up like we would tighten a seatbelt. So keep on tightening it up. The tighter, the easier it gets. Now, I like to cross my feet over. That gives me a little bit more space. And then I tighten it as much as I can. So from this position, what we're going to do is, again, we're going to bring our hands down. Now, the hands need to be really fairly far back. So if I I bring my hands down here, there is no way I'm going to lift myself off the ground. And that's my aim. So the more I bring my hands back, the easier it gets. 
But if I bring my hands back, I have to really round through the spine as much as I can. So you can see how I'm protracting through the shoulders. I'm trying to really get that rounding into the shoulders. The more I do that, the more I hollow into my chest, the more space I will create into this pose. So we're trying to really shorten the front of the body so that we can draw our knees up. Our lolasana, our dangle pose, a very hard pose. A lot of things have to come together, but it's a great preparation for our crow pose, even if we don't come totally into this pose. It's totally fine. So we get that feeling of really working the hands, so we're gripping the floor as much as you can, making sure that the fingers, the tips of the fingers are really active, shortening the front of the body. Now we're going to push the floor away, and we're just going to see if we can just lift our knees and our legs up off the ground. So I'm not really drawing the knees in, I'm just kind of holding them where they are, and I just lift them up for a moment, and then I release it back down. So we're going to do that a couple of times, just lifting up, see if we can create a little bit of space and then draw it back in. Now, if you feel that you can't come off the ground, just nothing happens, feel that you activate your core more and press it more up and push more through the shoulders to really try to find that space. So then press your hands one last time, lift it up as much as you can, and then release it back down. So taking a moment here, interlacing your hands behind and finding a nice stretch out into the shoulders, pushing the hands away from you opening up into the chest, finding that release. And then we're going to do that again. Now, instead of just lifting ourselves up and activating into the core, now we're also going to feel that we really activate into our hip flexors. We're going to draw our knees into our chest. So we're really going to try to feel that the knees and the chest move towards each other. Now, I don't want to bring the chest down. I really want to bring the knees up. So I want to feel that really into my hip flexors and into my core. So I bring my hands down. Don't bring them too far forward. You have to have them fairly far back. My wrists are just in front of the strap. So that position, grip the floor as much as you can. Your fingers are the brakes, and additionally, your fingers are going to help you to um, not fall forward. So draw your fingers in. Now lift up, and then draw your knees into your chest as much as you can. Draw them in, draw them in, draw them in, draw them in. Draw them in a little bit more. Ooh, and then slowly release it down. Good, we're going to do that one more time. So you might feel that the strap is really very helpful here. So we just use the strap to get that nice little bit of extra lift. We don't have to do anything to keep our feet up off the ground, and that has a benefit, but it also has a disadvantage because cheating becomes really quite hard. So if you find it hard to find a lift, then just don't worry about it. Just get as much lift as you feel you can get. Maybe that is just a little bit of elevation, and that's perfectly fine. That's where you want to start. So gripping the floor with your fingers, last one. Activate into your core, round into your shoulders, pull your chest all the way in, lift yourself off the floor, and then draw your knees up. Draw them up, draw them up, draw them up, all the way to the chest. See if they can touch, pushing through the palms of your hands, gripping the floor, and then slowly release it down and removing the strap. Bring the strap out to the sides. Bring your hands out in front. From here, we're going to step it back. High plank. Activating into your core. Just feel here for a moment. Into the knees after that compression that we had. Pushing the floor away as much as you can. Taking a deep breath in. On the exhalation, lower down halfway only. Chaturanga. On your inhale, press it back up. Exhale, lower down halfway only. Don't go too deep. Inhale, roll it up. Upward facing dog pose. Take a moment here to release into the front of the hips. Wriggle your hips. Take a deep breath in on the exhalation. Push it back downward facing dog pose. Take a moment here. Stretching into the hands, into the ground, pushing the floor away, finding that elevation. On your inhalation, coming back into your high plank. Find that motion here. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, right knee, right elbow. Inhale, step it back. Exhale, left knee, left elbow. Inhale, step it back. Exhale here fully. On your inhale now, draw your right knee into your shoulder, into your elbow, and then kick it all the way back. Three-legged dog. On the exhalation, step your foot forward and all the way through. Runner's lunge. Finding that lift here through the chest and the lowering down, the opening into the front of the left hip. 
On your inhalation coming up, crescent lunge pose. On the exhalation, find your twist. Want to release any tension that we might have built up into the lower back or into the area between the shoulder blades. On your inhalation, reach it all the way up. On the exhalation, open it up, warrior two. Sitting down nice and deep here, allowing the hips to release any tension. Inhale, reach it back into your peaceful warrior. Exhale, extend it forward, extended angle pose. Elbow can come onto the knee, or maybe your hand is on the inside. Keep on lifting and opening up here into the side body. Take a deep breath in. On the exhalation, release your hand down onto the ground. Both hands are on the inside of the foot. Humble warrior variation. Feel for a moment into your hips. Now we're going to see if we can bring the right hand underneath, or the right shoulder, I should say, underneath the right knee. The hand goes to the outside of your foot. From here, we're going to bend the leg out to the side. We tuck the left elbow in, and we're finding here a flying splits without finding a splits pose. Stepping it back, downward facing dog pose. Inhale, roll it forward. Exhale, left elbow, left knee. Inhale, step it back. Exhale, right elbow, right knee. Inhale, step it back. Now inhale, right knee, left knee, left elbow. Reach it up, three-legged dog. Exhaling forward and through, runner's lunge on the left side. Feeling for a moment into the hips. Releasing tension in the front of your right hip. Exhale here fully. On your inhalation, reach it up, crescent lunge pose. Exhale, find your twist. Releasing tension from the spine. Releasing tension that might be there in between your shoulder blades. Inhalation, release it back up. Crescent lunge pose. Exhale, warrior two. Feeling here in that space between the shoulder blades. Inhale, reach it back, peaceful warrior. Exhale, extend it forward, extend it angle pose. Maybe elbow onto the knee, maybe you can go lower. Take a deep breath in. On the exhalation, both hands on the inside of your foot, coming onto your toes of your back foot, releasing down into your hips. Lifting up, both arms are straight. Carrying our left leg as a little backpack over our left shoulder. And then we're going to see if we can push the foot out to the side, tucking the right elbow and finding a little bit of flight here. And then stepping it back, downward facing dog pose. Take a moment here, pedaling your heels, noticing what is there. We're nearly ready for our crow pose. Exhaling fully, finding a couple of thunderbolt hops. So bending your legs, inhale, jumping it up very lightly, tucking your knees, exhale, landing. Inhale, jumping it up very lightly, exhale, landing. Inhale, up very lightly and land one more time. Inhale, up very lightly, land it down, stepping it forward or maybe thunderbolt hop forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward and down. Inhale again, halfway lift. Stepping the feet hip width apart. Stepping onto your wrist, releasing any tension that you might have built up into the wrists. Releasing your hands. Inhales a halfway lift. Exhale forward and down. Inhale coming all the way up to standing. Exhale, draw your hands into your chest. Take a moment here. Taking a deep breath in. Exhaling fully. Inhale, pressing your hands away. 
transferring your weight into your right foot. Draw your left knee into your left elbow. Now push your hands away as much as you can, shortening into the front of the body, and see if the knee and the elbow can touch. They don't have to touch, but it's just kind of that aim. We don't want to lower the arms down. We just want to lift that knee up. And then release, changing sides. So same thing, we're lifting the right knee up. And then we push the floor away, rounding into the spine, pushing the chest away from the knee, drawing the knee in, and maybe the knee, the knee and the elbow can touch. You can keep your balance, that is. Keep on lifting, 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 lifting. And then release it down. Inhale, reach it up. Interlacing your fingers, finding Kali Mudra. Exhale, sitting down into your toe squat. Find that lift here. Keep on reaching and lengthening. Take a deep breath in. On the exhalation, slowly sit back down. Just behind your heels, keep your toes onto the ground. Keep on pushing away, keep on pressing through your belly button towards the back of the room. Keep on pressing your knees into your elbows, making your toes really light. Take a deep breath in. On the exhalation, find your low boat from here. Keep on pushing. Lifting your hands up towards the ceiling. Exhale, draw your knees into your chest. Lift your tailbone a little bit. Bring your knees a little bit more towards your armpits. Exhale, extend it out, high plank. Inhale, draw it in. Bring your knees as close to your armpits as you can. Bring your armpits as close to your knees as you can. Exhale, extend it out one more time. Knees towards your elbows. And then draw it in, draw it in. Push the floor away as much as you can. And then hug your knees in, release your head down. Taking a moment here, we're ready now for a crow pose. We thought we would never get there. Taking a moment here, squashing into the hips, releasing any tension that you might have built up here into the hips, to your hip flexors. Bring your forehead towards your knees and slowly begin to rock and roll over your spine, releasing tension. And then see if you can rock yourself all the way up into a squat pose. The feet are together, the knees are out to the side. And here we are, ready for our crow. Bring your hands down onto the ground. Gripping the floor with your fingers as much as you can. Now we want to come high up onto the toes, as high as we can. If you find that you're worried to go forward when you're balancing, please use your block and bring your block in front of you so that when you can go forward, you can land the crown of the head or the forehead down onto the block. You can also bring the block like this, or if you have a bolster, you can use your bolster. Just to make sure that when you do go forward, that you don't go down so far. Also, it's one of those things that helps us mentally. Now, stay onto your tippy toes. Push your knees anywhere onto your upper arms. Keep on pushing as you begin to lean forward like chaturanga arms and then lifting your feet up. Maybe one at a time as we did before, maybe both. Now first we're just only focusing on finding our balance. So wherever you are, this balance. Feel that. Feel the weight into your hands and feel how your fingers are gripping the floor, helping you to stay here. And then slowly release it down. Releasing here for a moment, finding some softness. Notice what has happened in your mind. So now we're going to do that again. If this was your first crow, then you just repeat exactly what you did before. If you've done crows before, then what you want to do is push the floor away as much as you can. As much as you can. So really feel that lightness so that your knees actually become really quite light. So bring your hands down onto the ground, lifting high up onto your tippy toes, bring your knees close towards your armpits, anywhere where they go, and then begin to lean forward and lift your toes up off the ground, bring them in the direction of your sitting bones. And now instead of feeling heavy, try to feel how you push the floor away, push it away, push it away as much as you can. Keep on pushing it away, pressing through your belly button, up, 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 through your toes, up, keep on lifting up, beautiful. And then slowly release it down. Taking a moment here, maybe release into your wrists. So there's a lot of pressure into the wrist. So maybe find some separation with your thumb and index finger and make some circles with your hand. 
we just need to be very strong here carrying all our weight. And our wrists are not really built to make, to carry that weight to be that strong. So I just want to make sure that we look after them, that we release any tension or pressure. And then we'll be doing that one more time. So bringing the hands down onto the ground, gripping the floor with your fingers as much as you can. Your fingers are the brakes. The fingers are going to make all the difference by feeling that you're really balanced. So keep on gripping the fingers, lifting your hips high up, coming high up onto your tippy toes. Bring the knees as close towards your armpits as you can. If you want to work more into your crane pose, then your knees go all the way up into your armpits and your arms remain straight as you lift yourself up into your crane pose. It's the same pose, crane and crow, but crane has her arms straight and the gaze is a little bit more forward. Keep on lifting up. Keep on pressing your knees into your arms as much as you can. Taking a deep breath in. On the exhalation, slowly release it. Back down, bringing your knees down onto the ground. Coming onto the tops of the feet. Shaking your hands out for a moment. Interlacing your fingers and pressing through the palms. And then bringing your hands together and making some circles. Now, if you feel that that was enough, then we're just going to stay here for a moment. Or you're very welcome to come into a child's pose where you release your hands back and your forehead down onto the ground. If you feel that you would like just to work a little bit more, then just stay with me. We're going to work on jumping into and out of a crow pose. That's one of the next steps that we would want to work on. So bring your hands down onto the ground. First, we're going to come into our crow pose. So we're coming onto the tips of the toes. We're lifting the hips high up. We bring our knees as high up as we can into our armpits. And from here, we're gripping the floor with the fingers and we're lifting the feet up off the ground. Now, instead of feeling that you're going to jump back, try to feel that you're going to actually bring your, your chest forward. We're going to jump into a chaturanga position. So take a deep breath in. Exhale, jump it back, chaturanga. Inhale, roll it up. Exhale, roll it back. Good. So if you have, if you land onto your belly and you have a bit of a belly flop, then don't worry about that. That's great. That means that you actually jumped back and that your knees extended out. So we do that again. So bring your feet forward. Pressing the floor away with your hands. Bring your knees anywhere above your elbows onto your arms. Maybe arms are bent a long way. Maybe they're more straight, whatever feels right for you. Instead of just jumping your legs back, feel how your chest can lift forward as you shoot your legs out. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, shoot them out. Inhale up. Exhale back. If you feel that that's something you'd like to work with a little bit more, then just stay with that, coming into your crow and shooting your legs out as you kind of try to press your chest forward as much as you can. If that's something that you can master or you feel comfortable with, then we're also going to see if we can actually jump forward into our crow position. And that's one of the reasons why we did the thunderbolt hops before, to kind of get that feeling of lightness. So as we're jumping forward in our crow, we don't want to feel that we're kind of pushing forward with our knees. We want to feel our hips are lifting up. And from there, our knees are landing onto our upper arms anywhere. So we have to remember to bend our arms slightly as we land. We want to do that really last minute, though, not too early, because it's really hard to hold it when your arms are bent. So bringing your hands down onto the ground. Finding a downward facing dog pose. Maybe stepping your feet in a little bit more than what you normally would do. Gets a little bit easier the closer your legs are in. So bend your legs, grip the floor as much as you can. Exhale fully on the inhalation, thunderbolt hop up. And then instead of landing, we're going to land the knees onto the upper arms. So pressing, exhale fully, inhale thunderbolt hop. Exhale land. Maybe the toes come down onto the ground. Perfect. Perfect. So then maybe float. Jump it back. Inhale. Exhale down. Look, we're going to do that again. 
So this time we're going to see if we can maybe keep the toes off the ground or maybe the toes land again. That's perfectly fine. Gripping the floor, making sure that our brakes, our fingers are really actively working. Exhale, fully activate your core. Inhale, thunderbolt hop. Exhale, landing onto your knees, onto your elbows. As much lightness as possible. Maybe jump it back. One more time. Inhale up. Exhale back. So we're going to do that one more time. Bring your feet in the right position. Feel where that is. So your fingers are really important here. Your core is really important here. We don't want to feel heaviness. We want to feel that if we push the floor away the whole way. Exhale, bend your legs. Inhale, thunderbolt. Exhale, land onto your elbows. Take a deep breath in. Either step, jump, back, inhale, up dog. Exhale into your downward facing dog pose. This is where we meet. If you've had a rest into your child's pose, just come up for a moment into your downward facing dog pose. Exhaling here fully. Just want to release now into the hips and into our core. So there's no better way to do that than in a back bend. So from here, we're going to just bring our knees in between the hands and come to sit in between the heels. If you feel that that's too much for your knees, then you grab your block and you sit on top of your block. Also, if you want to find more of an opening, then also feel free to sit onto your block. In this position, feel where you need to be as you begin to walk your hands back. And maybe you can come all the way down onto like your forearms, like this. Or maybe you can even bring your shoulders down. So even either with a block, as I'm showing, which makes it much, much stronger into the front of the body, or without the block, which makes it much more comfortable. Laying down and just find that opening here now into your hip flexors, into your belly area. There where you've done all that shortening and all that work. We just want to release that now for a moment. In our Supta Varasana, our reclined hero's pose. I'd like to keep my arms back, but if you feel that it's more of a release to extend your arms over your head, then of course you're very welcome to do so. Keep on softening into the front of the hips. Really want to release that area, especially. We've done a lot of shortening there, a lot of activation there. We don't want to keep that tense. We want to make sure that it opens and releases. And then if you're comfortable in this position, maybe you can just unfold your legs and bring your feet down onto the ground to come into a bridge pose position. Or you can push yourself all the way up to sitting and then come back down. So I'd like to unfold my legs just like this, removing the block. Now, if you'd like to stay with the block, if you'd like to have a little bit more of a relaxing kind of pose, then what you find is your supported um, back bend, your supported bridge. You just bring your block underneath your hips. You can keep your legs bent or you can straighten your legs out just like this. That feels better for you. Or you can work into either a bridge pose or a full back bend. So coming into your bridge, rolling your hips up, finding that nice length, either staying here, you're welcome to interlace your hands behind your hips, or if you'd like to find your full wheel, your full back bend, then bring your hands next to your ears and lifting up. You should feel a lot of opening into your wrists here. We've done a lot of opening. So open up here through the front of the body, no matter which pose you're in, whichever variation you're in. And then slowly releasing down. Wind wiping your knees from side to side. We'll be doing this one more time. And then bringing your hands down, either staying on your block, if you're still on your block, or bringing your block back under your hips, 
or finding your bridge pose or finding your full wheel pose. Opening up here into the front of the body. Any variations that you'd like to work with, always feel free to add those. And whenever you feel ready, releasing yourself back down, hugging your knees into your chest, finding your apanasana, releasing the lower back, making some circles with your knees. And then bringing your hands behind your knees and straightening your legs out. Now gently pull your legs back into your hands in a supported um, Oh. <laughs> supported uh, shoulder stand variation. Keep on releasing here, keep on letting go. Feel how your lower back is pressing down into the ground. Become aware of that space in between your shoulders and feel that nice little bit of a stretch. If the stretch is not enough, then you can always bring your hands higher up and push your legs into your arms a little bit more. Whatever kind of feels good. Then releasing your hands from behind your legs, crossing your arms over. Hands go to the outsides of the knees and then slowly open up your legs out to the sides. Your hands can go anywhere on your knees or onto your thighs or higher up. Getting a nice stretch here in between the shoulder blades. That's what we're after. And still releasing here in a rejuvenating pose. Viparita Karani. <laughs> Remember just what the name was. Keep on opening up here into the shoulders. Keep on releasing, stretching out. Allowing the lymph nodes here in the legs to be drained. Allowing your heart to slow down. A lot of oxygen will move here into your brain. Giving your heart a signal that it can slow down. And then bending your legs and releasing yourself down into your Shavasana. Laying down here, palms are facing up. Feel how you're sinking down into the ground, releasing tension here, creating softness, creating space. This is that beautiful time in your practice where you can release any tension in your body, where you can release any tension in your mind, and where you can find that connection, the connection within to your inner fire. Keep on releasing and softening, becoming aware how the earth is carrying you. Letting go of any needs, any desires. Feel that you can just only be in your own space, in your own time. Making sure that you stay in your Shavasana for as long as you feel is good for you. I hope you enjoyed your practice today, working into our crow pose, our kakasana or bakasana, as this pose is often called as well, our crow and our crane pose. Thank you so much for practicing with me. With love and gratitude. Namaste.